Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Shadowrun Hong Kong. Let's go ahead and talk to Kindly and explain how the plastic faced man got away. Yeah, that must be it. It's not like I let him go or anything. The walk through the Mahjong parlor is punctuated by the tantalizing smell of coconut and fried confection. The crew surrounds Kindly Chang, watching uncomfortably as she peels small egg-shaped delicacies from a waffle-like pastry and pops them into her mouth. Each time she does, her eyes close in ecstasy and a soft sound comes from her throat. There you are, Sean. Your crew here tells me that you were able to locate and interrogate the plastic-faced man. The straw sandal's eyes narrow and her rusty voice takes on a jagged edge. They haven't told me his current disposition, however. I assume everything went as I instructed? Hmm. Well. You know what? I let him walk away. I've been too valuable to Auntie. Well, that's probably a stupid th logic, isn't it? Uh. Let's just say we managed to extract valuable information from him. Her eyes remain narrow. So he's dead? No. I let him walk away. Kindly Chang folds her hands and her face becomes perfectly still. Ten seconds go by. When she speaks again, her voice is calm. I thought I was clear that I wanted him dead. His memory was gone. He wasn't a player anymore. Your actions don't send a strong message to Josephine Tseng. When I tell you I want someone dead, I prefer they become dead. I do the strategy. You execute the strategy. She surveys your crew. Shadow runners who wish to remain under my protection must remember their places. Her stiff eyebrows rise. That said, you succeeded in removing one of her pieces from the board. So let's move on. She pops an egg pastry into her mouth. I trust you got something useful out of the plastic faced man before you let him go? We got plenty. Who sounds e eager? He gave us a data dump on everything he knew about Prosperity Tower. First hand info. Josephine's headquarters. She puts down the pastry and rubs her nose, considering. That could be useful, I suppose. What do you intend on doing with it? We're going to rescue Raymond. He's alive, Auntie. Just like I said he was. Josephine's holding him in there. She's doing something to his brain. Something to his brain? She takes another bite of her pastry. What is she up to now? Based on the memory that Mr. Plastic showed us, it looks like she's trying to rewire her son's memories using something called ASSIST, Artificial Sensory Induction Systems Technology. It allows the user to record, process, and feed synthetic sensory input to the brain. Like a SimSense chip. Yes, Auntie. It's a technology that led to SimSense. It's also what allows Deckers to enter the Matrix and grants Riggers a neural connection to their drones. An expert assist technician could alter someone's personality, memory, even identity. I'm guessing experts like that don't grow on trees? Definitely not. Changing someone's memories requires a world-class expert and assist and a massive amount of computing power. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing to him, but I'm guessing that his mom wants him to forget something. Or to remember it differently, maybe. Hmm. What do we know about Prosperity Tower? Mr. Plastic dropped us a couple of terabytes of data on Prosperity Tower, right out of his brain. ISO and I have been studying it. Lots of good intel to mine there. He looks at the rest of the crew. Just what we need to take a run at the place and hope to get out alive. Hmm. So how do we make our approach? Fortunately, Prosperity Tower is one of Sang's lower security locations. It's mostly administrative, marketing, that sort of thing. I don't buy that for a second. That's good. Kindly turns to her enforcer. Mr. Bao, give the runners those old Sang security passes you used on that hijacking last year. Yes, Mrs. Chang. They'll get them. Those passes, those passes should get you through the lobby. Triad boss pokes a fingernail between her teeth and dislodges a piece of pastry. You'll still have to explain your presence, Sean, so don't expect to just walk on through. What about that junk data you held on to after the Wuxing run, Iso? Anything in there we can use? Good thinking, and I'm already ahead of you. 
I scoured the leftover Wujing paperwork and found a way to change our status to Special Couriers. We can use that to pose as a third party Wujing uses to deliver important packages. And that'll work for a while, but we can't expect to stay in cover for long. One way or another, things are going to get hot. Hmm. Well, the loading dock sounds like just the edge we need. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'll get us booked into the Sang system and print off some matching papers. We'll need a van to make it look legit. Bow. Consider it done. Now, talk to me about the security setup. How do we get to Raymond? The key to this operation are the three security stations located on different floors. The matrix systems in these security stations are the command and control hubs for the entire building security. As such, they're the best place to find out where Raymond Black is being held. That's all we got on his location? All we know is that he's being held somewhere called Lab 12. But that is, or, but where that is or how to get in there is something we need to figure out on site. If things go hostile, the best thing to do is get to an alarm panel or a matrix security node and shut things down. If we're noticed, we'll have a brief window to cut the link to the alarm system. If we do that, it'll isolate the whole floor from the security system. The rest of the building won't know what's happening there. If the alarm goes off and we cut the link to the alarm system, we can spoof the system, tell it that we've moved to another location. That might work once or twice, but if we spoof too many alarms, they'll figure it out. How long is this brief window to cut the alarm? Yeah, maybe 30 seconds. Maybe less if the network isn't cluttered with traffic. If there's a, also a fail, uh, fail safe, or if there's as a fail safe so security doesn't stampede all over the building if a janitor forgets to close a door. Alright, what about the guards? Quantity? Training? Uh, standard corp security for the most part, but Sang has a rapid response squad for high priority events. That would be us. Hmm. Well, is Gobbit right? You think, ah, that's, that makes, Lab 12, yes, that would be a high priority event, I would imag imagine. But that sounds manageable up to a point we find Raymond. Judging by the way Grandma Sang took out Carter, Gunshot, and Nightjar, I'd say she isn't interested in anything getting anywhere near her son. Expect to face Sang's elite security once we find him. What else do we have on the security station themselves? Staffing? Weaknesses? Only one thing worth mentioning. Iso looks over to Wu. The only way into a security station is with a key card, and guards on each floor carry a card to the station on that floor. So we can get a card by taking them out, but there may be other ways of getting key cards. Wu ca crosses his arms across his chest. Like I said, the security stations are the key to this operation. They provide multiple opportunities to exploit the system and determine how to approach the rest of our incursion. Hmm. You know what? We're going to go as quiet as possible until we have no choice. We don't need an entire building full of security on us. We've done that before. Roger that. We'll be as quiet as rats. Yeah, I see what you did there. So which station do we hit first? The little Decker purses his, her lips. No way to know. We'll need to take one of them and use it to determine our next step. It's like we have directions to go find a map. Well, that's all I need to know about security then. This is going to be fun. Let's hope it doesn't give, or it's enough to give us an edge. So how do we stop this assist thing from rewiring Raymond? All we know is that an assist device is located in lab 12. It's the only one in the building. Now, I doubt that Grandma will just hand over the passcodes to her system if we ask nicely. So we'll need a Decker to access the assist device and eject him from the system safely before she scrambles his brain. Got it. What does the Decker need to do to eject him safely? And like I said, we don't know. We're going to have to improvise. Figure that out when we get there. Alright, I hate going into these runs blind. One other thing, which I, was help, which I was helping Duncan verify as much of this data as I could, I decided to collect our marker with Bull and his team of runners. Ah! Good call. We need all the help that we can get. Iso looks up at Wu, her eyes big and round. Yeah, no kidding. Turns out Bull and our runner friends hit Sang a few months back. Low rent smash and grab for another core. But they got a quick scan of the building's matrix security before they rabbited. They gave us data flags that pinpoint where the security nodes are located in, inside of Sang's system. So when we jack into a security station, we'll be able to make a direct attack on the security node. 
That could buy us a few seconds. We need to cut the alarm link. Nice work. Kindly cuts in, licking her fingers with loud smacking noises. One more thing, Sean. While you're in her headquarters, look for anything that we can use to incriminate or embarrass Josephine Tsang. I want debt. Something I can feed to an acquaintance on the Executive Council. Someone who stands to gain from it. Hmm. Okay. Right after I rescue my father. She pops another egg treat into her mouth and her eyes close tight with pleasure. Of course, my sweet. Of course. We seem to have gotten through letting the pla- We got off scot-free with letting the plastic face man go. Now go enjoy Prosperity Tower, she smiles wolfishly, and give Josephine Tsang my regards. And we gain four karma. Nice. So that should give us seven karma right now? Hmm. I like that. Now, what we got here? Infiltrate Prosperity Tower and find Raymond Black. Well, if that's not the last quest in this game, I don't know what is. So, every, so chances are this is going to be our last chance to talk to people. Uh, well, let's go ahead and do the rounds again, just to make sure. We'll start with Ten Armed Ambrose, and then we'll go up to Club 88, talk to Spider. Hopefully we can uh, chat with Crafty again, see if she gives us, gives us any uh, new info, any insight. Ambrose, anything new? What's cracking? Nope. Fair enough. Hmm. Okay, Frederick, do you have a lot on your mind? Oh, you still have a lot on your mind. Everyone's indecisive. I think that's probably what happened, guys. I think I may have just kept them in a state of limbo instead of just told them to do something. Ugh. Oh, well. That's life. But at least they're not running off making stupid decisions. Now, I know for a fact that Law doesn't have anything new to say, so I'm not even going to worry about that. Um, Crafty is probably going to be my next stop. We'll check the Go players again. Come on, Crafty, give me something new. Anything. Oi. Well, she's already been very, very helpful, and we kind of helped her come to terms with what happened to her mother. That might be the only thing, last thing that we can do. Jen, anything new? She who chuckles. Sean, long time no see. How your old bones are? Hope your old bones aren't spreading gossip. No, no, nothing like that. It's related to our dreams, actually. Your timing is perfect. He holds his beard thoughtfully, a mischievous look to him. Or have you been lurking behind a buoy, waiting for the right moment to pop out and feed the dramatic tension of the moment? A short laugh, like a single punch to the gut, burst out of Chim. <laughs> There's no way this whelp has that sort of grace. Shiu shrugs. You never know. Seems like something I might have tried in my youth. Not my style. So exactly what about the dreams were you three discussing? Their expression sober, humor replaced by an uncomfortable stillness. The men's moods... Wait a minute. This is the local man, man stuff. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, the world is filled with ja dangers. So it's the same, same stuff that we, we dealt with. All right. Nothing over there. Spider Shen, obviously. Okay, let's head to the bolt hole. Ooh. I'm getting anxious, guys. This is going to be one heck of a run. Now, is there anything in the mission computer I should be aware of? Do, do, do. Oh, we have an unread message. Thanks. 
from Dreamland. Just wanted to say thanks for the hookup with Rhombus. Iso was right. He was able to make a few modifications for me that, well, let's just say I have some relief and leave it at that. I owe you both. Thanks, D. Hey, a happy ending. Anything on the BBS? We haven't seen the BBS for a while. Landfall T-24. We are T-24 hours for Typhoon Usagi to cross ashore. I'm signing off until tomorrow sometime. See attached list of Met sites if you wish to follow storm progress. Typhoon Usagi's periphery will strike Hong Kong within the next 24 hours, with the eye crossing ashore near the San Shaozen Ping Shazen Megaplex, 80, km, 80 km, uh, kilometers southwest of Hong Kong. Usaki has weakened, but meteorologists warn it's still a very destructive storm. Severe damage and flooding are expected in the direct storm path. We now go to a special warning from the HKPF. Oh, I remember her. The HKPF and the Security Subcommittee of the Executive Council advise all residents to shelter in place and stay connected to Matrix Hardlines. A curfew is in effect beginning at 1600 hours, 4 p.m. Strong electromagnetic interference is expected, shutting down wireless communications. Hong Kong will experience moderate winds and extremely heavy precipitation. Landslides and minor runoff flooding are expected. Citizens are advised to avoid hillside roads and under no circumstances to enter drainage troughs, even to recover lost belongings or attempt rescues. Call emergency personnel who are specifically trained and equipped to save lives. The automatic Sik Zhong wall has activated at 6.30 this morning, enclosing Victoria Harbor, blocking incoming waves and limiting the storm surge experience in the harbor to one half meter. The Port Authority indicates that its seawater pump capacity will be easily sufficient to prevent a destructive rise in harbor level, but rolling brownouts are likely as, are likely as electricity is routed to the seawall's pump arrays. Where has everyone gone on the boards? Does the term crunch mean anything to you? People are running? Won't all the security forces be on high alert during the storm? That's a sheer question of resource coverage, Kong Ming. Like arson in old UCAS cities on Halloween. There are innumerable targets across the Kong. High alert can't be maintained at even a fraction of them through a typhoon. This is a fight the A-teams on both sides always know is coming. But can't the corpse just plan ahead and hire more people? Blood Meridian? Are you there? Anyone? Everyone's going dark. Now, we had no more pay data. Hmm. Okay. So far, so good. Let's talk to the crew. Good old Ractor, my boy. Welcome back. And did we take you on that last run? I don't... Did we? Hold on. I'm trying to remember who we had. No, we didn't. We had Gaichu and Wu. Nothing there. Wu's gonna have some words with me about letting the plastic face man go. I can almost guarantee that. Box of mementos. Not a thing. Come on now. Okay. What do you think of that last mission, Gaichu? A strange affair. I confess, when Zhao Zhi betrayed us, I was concerned. It seemed that your quarry would slip from your grasp once more, and that the puppet master, Josephine Tsang, would remain in the shadows. Josephine's oversight in allowing Zhao Zhi to live was a terrible mistake. I find it especially interesting that after all this, you allowed the plastic-faced man to live. Your understanding of the realities of shadow life surpasses any others that I have met. Your restraint is admirable, and reflects how you see your own place in the world. He is a man doing a job just as we are. We are not enemies. The great and powerful are safe in their steel towers. Oh, Gaichu supports us. That's cool. That's good to know, actually. Okay, Wu. I'm ready for uh, the tongue lashing you were about to give me. Before we head out here on our run. You mean extracting the plastic-faced man? Wu frowns and his answer comes out in a low rasp. I knew we'd eventually find that guy, but getting the information out of him before he brain-wiped was tense. He looks at his boots for a minute, minute, making a decision. Hey, listen, Caleb. I don't disagree with you in front of the crew, but I wouldn't have let that guy just walk away like that. Too dangerous to leave him alive? 
Yeah, he's a loose end and we don't need those right now. We're in enough trouble as it is. We don't need someone like him walking around. Hmm. Well, Kindly's going to react however she chooses to react. We'll just have to roll with the consequences, if any. That's what we've been doing, Caleb. Seems like that's all we do. He stops and raises a finger. Just one more thing. That guy took Raymond. For that alone, I'd drill him. At least we know that Raymond's alive now. His lips tighten over his teeth. I fracking knew it. Yep, you called it. Uh, my gut said that we were being fed a load of dreck. I'm glad to be right. Well, now we need to get him out of Prosperity Tower before Grandma reprograms him. Man, she sounds like a piece of work, doesn't she? Maybe we'll get to say hi when we bust into her headquarters. He grabs his goggles off his bunk. I want to see if there's a family resemblance before I drop her. Anyway, enough about that. Need anything else? That is all. Okay, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought... I thought me and her, him, me and uh, Wu were going to get into a nice little slugfest. Iso! Okay, any questions about the walled city? Nope. What about the last run? And we're close, Sean. We're so close I can taste it. A few more hours, maybe a day or two, and you'll have your father back. Josephine Tsang is going to get what's coming to her. For you, me, and especially for Nightjar, Gutshot, and Carter. And we've got the plastic-faced man to thank for it. You shouldn't have let Kindly know that we let the guy live, though. I mean, she was pretty clear with us that she wanted him dead, even if we didn't. And we're still alive, so I guess we can count our blessings. But the next time that something like this comes up, remember that what Kindly doesn't know can't hurt us. Okay, I understand. But maybe Kindly will respect the fact that I just flat out said I didn't try and lie to her. I don't know. She's a very strange one. Any thoughts about the last run, Gobbit? Yeah, I think we're closing in on the end here, Seattle. With the data we got from the Plastic Face Man, Josephine's number is just about up. She grins, patting you gently on the arm. Just think, you'll be able to get your dad back. That's gotta be worth something, right? I can't believe you told Kindly Cheng that we let the plastic guy go, though. I mean, we still have our skin, and we aren't chained to a rock at the bottom of the lake, so I'm counting it a win, but still. Next time, just, just lie, okay? The gentle pat turns into slaps, and her smile looks forced. I'm not joking, by the way. Don't do that again. Seriously. <laughs> well, these guys are showing the fear of someone who grew up with Kindly, so... I don't know. If we got away with it, we got away with it. Didn't even get a slap on the wrist. And it looks like everything has been dealt with here, guys. Um, we've got seven karma to spend. Might as well go ahead and spend it, right? We still got our quickness at five and our dodge at five. But if we're going to go ahead and spend it... I mean, we are a troll. Let's go ahead and pump up our strength to seven. Strength and willpower at seven. That looks good to me. Can't take it with you, right? Now, let's look at Spider one more time, see if she has anything new and exciting for us. Not a thing. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, head to the tower. Get this, get this show on the road. Hopefully nothing's going to try and kill us right here in the station. Infiltrate Prosperity Tower to rescue Raymond Black. Now we choose our crew. Uh, we're definitely taking Duncan. We've got to take Duncan. We've got to take Iso because we need a Decker. And... Man, I have no idea. Gaichu and Ractor being the optional characters, I don't think... Because that, technically it's optional to use them. We're going to go ahead and take... As much as I love Ractor and Gaichu both, we'll go ahead and take Gobbit. The core crew. Because... I think we're probably going to need them. Actually, I need to look at their all of their inventory. You know what I'm probably going to do, guys? Um, hmm. Well, we've got the money to spend. I'm going to head over. 
they have their they have their base equipment. That's that is what it is. However, I'm gonna head over here to Ten Armed Ambrose, and if we are not gonna have any money to spend, really, let's look at the medical supplies. I am going to. Hmm. Okay, we have this stuff in the stash. I'm going, believe it or not, oh, I don't want to sell the advanced med kits. I'm going to try and actually equip those to the rest of the squad. But for me, myself, and I, I am going to sell these. And the gold, man. Hmm. I got the money to spare. Heck. We'll sell that. We have... 5,000 new yen. I'm going to buy two platinum trauma kits. And one, two, three. Okay, I only have the room for three. So we'll get one more advanced med kit for 3,000. We'll confirm that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty well set up for this now, I would think. And then we can go ahead and equip, equip the rest of the crew with this. And we're also going to give Gobbit the... Uh, Mummy spirit talisman. Probably use... I think we're going to keep the mummy spirit talisman for whenever we have to fight the final boss. But we'll confirm that. No more cyber... No cybernetics or anything other than my uh, crowd control hands. And that's pretty much it, guys. In the next episode, we'll actually start the, uh, the run to Prosperity Tower. And I believe that it is the last mission in the game. I'm not sure. But we will soon find out. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, go ahead and click like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.